You know him, you love him, you want some more of him. The voiceover doctor, a real smooth talker. The voiceover doctor show. Welcome to the VoiceOver Doctor Show. I am Bill Holmes, the VoiceOver Doctor, and with me today, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Townsend Coleman. Townsend Coleman. Yes. Townsend Coleman. Let me let me explain for the kids out there who don't know. Let me explain. Townsend, the voice of ABC, correct? Oh, uh, comedy. Yeah. Comedy. Uh, ABC, ABC comedy. Right. You were the voice of NBC comedy for sixteen right? years. Right. For sixteen years. And like, what was one of the little NBC comedy promos you would always say? Um, Thirty Rock, all new this Thursday on NBC. <laughs> I love that. Uh, uh, the the more prominent cartoons, The Tick. You the were tick? obviously The Tick. Uh, I was The Tick. And, and uh, you just said Spoon or something. Oh, it's a Spoon. <laughs> there you go. And most prominently, according to Bo, our valet. Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you were the original Michelangelo. Michelangelo, yeah. Wow. Is Cowabunga, that- dude! <laughs> All right! That is totally bodacious. Did you get that? Bo. Dacious. Dacious? Yes. Bo the Valet Dacious? Oh, I got, got it. it. Oh, okay, I like that. I like that. Listen, uh, I, I know we're going to be talking for a while. Would you. Would you like a little drink? Are you a little thirsty? I'm parched. Okay. I am, I'm, uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna, we have a dust. new. We have our new uh, uh, gal here tonight. Fortalisa. Fortalisa, please Fortalisa. come in. Fortalisa. Please come in with the drinks, please. Fortalisa. Oh yeah, baby. Oh, hold on just a minute. <laughs> this is where yeah. I need these glasses. <laughs> I knew I had these glasses on for a reason. Oh later. my. Hello. Oh, oh. Hi. <laughs> yeah. You didn't tell me this was part I of the told, deal. I told you it was a good thing. <laughs> Boy, I would have yes. charged more. <clears throat> oh, 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 uh, oh. my. Doctor, your hands are so sweaty. <laughs> yes, they are. Aren't they? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Fort Delisa. At least he's got Thank a pulse, you. huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, yeah, she's union, oh. right? She, there you go. Oh yeah, definitely union. <laughs> well, here, why don't why don't we have a little uh, a toast? Thank you for Thank being you. on the show here. Uh, you have your cranberry. Yeah, I have a little cranberry. of the Fortaleza. Fortaleza, yeah. Your sponsor, uh, huh? Fortaleza, Fortaleza, Fortaleza tequila. The best goddamn tequila oh, I've I ever know. had. Yeah, it okay. goes well with cranberry juice. Yeah, let are, me tell you. Are our I'm slamming it right they're, here. They're, they're, they're our sponsor. You know what? You know what goes great with tequila tell and me. cranberry juice? Tell me. Some homemade cookies. Cookies. Would That's you like some cookies? My, my first thought. Why don't we have uh, <laughs> Bo, our valet? Uh, he's he's here. We imported him in from England. Bo, please come in with the uh, with the uh, homemade cookies, oh, please. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thank nice. you. That's his entrance music. Oh, I get one. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh I yeah, get to actually that. eat it. Look at that. Hey, come around. Oh, this is yeah, terrific. Look at it. Let everybody get a good yeah. look at you there. Uh, oh, yeah. And Thank the cookies. You. Thank you very much, Bo. Yeah. Bo, here, put the cookies down right here. Thank you so much. So Thank good, you. man. And he's from Hello, England. Sir. Thank you very much. You're you're excused, Bo. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Delightful. <laughs> Delightful. <laughs> I love the tie. Man, if I'd known, I would have dressed up a little more. Oh, no, no, no. This, this is, is great. This... And on the day I start reading Wheat Belly. This is perfect. <laughs> really? <laughs> mm. Oh, 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 a good cookie. And yeah. cranberry juice and no. tequila? Yeah. You don't get any better than that. Now that we have cookies in our mouth, oh, yeah. we should talk. Please. Okay. So, listen. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing the show. I don't think you, yeah, I don't think you knew what you were in for here, did you? No, this is a much bigger production than I was <laughs> yeah. afraid it was going to be. It, it, you know what? It's a much bigger production than I thought it was going to be too. <laughs> but uh, but we're always expanding. We're always trying new things here at at Compost Productions. So now let me ask you this: um, How did you actually kind of get started? This is what we usually do with uh, our guests on the show here. Started in VO. In voiceover, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, or I mean, just as an actor in general, I mean, you because you gravitated to VO, right? right. You right. you uh, you actually were studying architecture, weren't you? Yeah, I actually was. Well, I, I was. Uh, I started doing theater in high school, mm-hmm. so th- that's kind of where that uh, germinated. But uh, 
I wanted to go to college to study acting. My mom wouldn't pay for it. She said, "You got to. If I'm going to pay for college, you got to go study something you can get a job in." <laughs> okay. I thought, all right. <laughs> and and the only other thing that I had any interest in at all at that time was uh, drawing, uh, graphic arts, architecture. Mm -hmm. And so I got in. I applied and got into the uh, architecture program at University of Colorado in Boulder. Okay. And uh, that was uh, me off to college in, in uh, right. the fall of 1972. And then when that didn't work out. And when that didn't you, work you out fell after, back on after acting. about four and a half days. <laughs> yeah, I fell back on acting. Yes. <laughs> Literally, after my first semester, I knew that the architecture you, you, thing you was the, not going to be. You were the Kurt Russell of architecture. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Yeah. Yeah, Jim well, Davey, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Jim oh, Davey, right. the phone. Woo! There he is again. Oh, yeah, and how about have, that theme that music, huh? Oh, yeah. I mean, ah, it's, That was a beat I won't get out of my head for days. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I'm not even going to go with that. <laughs> so, okay, so you stopped architecture. So I quit architecture okay. after my first semester mm -hmm. and uh, just went to... Um, uh, uh, what do they call it when it's just the general? I can't even remember. Gen Eds, so, general yeah, education. You know, when, uh, uh, yeah, just a just a general education with an emphasis in theater. Okay. So I started doing uh, plays at uh, Boulder and um, quit school after a year and a half. Decided that was a smart thing to do in in order to go home and get married at the age of twenty. Well, and, I I didn't quit school, but I got thrown out of school. So. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> So there's the, the there in, in, there's a hell with you. school, right? That's right. That's yeah. what we're saying to the young kids out there. Forget don't, about school. Don't School's, bother. It's not that important. Why? Yeah. Why the hell? Look where Just God is. Have a little fortalez. Mm. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> so now, Bo, on the other hand, highly educated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mathematician wants to do voiceover. Yeah, and he's a valet. And he's a valet, <laughs> no less. Yeah. So there I was in uh, University of Colorado, and. Mm -hmm. um, and and got involved with the radio program there, even though they didn't have a station on the air. Mm -hmm. I was uh, uh, taking classes, and they gave me the key to the radio studio, and oh. I could just go in and play overnight, and you know make tapes and practice. And so I, when I quit school, I uh, went home, got married, and about a year later. Uh, my my brother-in-law at the time was working at a radio station in Cleveland and said, uh, you know, we're all getting fired, which uh -huh. happens like every other day in radio. Yeah. And, uh, and he said, and they're changing formats at the station. They're going to be hiring new people, inexperienced, cheap. You might want to, you know, aud you know, audition or at least call the guy to see if he's interested. And so I called him up, and the guy gave me a job with, with really no experience on the air. Really? Yeah. And, uh, and I worked weekends, midnight to six, the graveyard shift. Yeah. Uh, paying and, your and, dues? And paying my dues. Yeah, I did that for about six or eight months. And then, they, you, then, you... they, then they fired me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really? Because apparently I wasn't good enough. And, it was a, and the, here's the thing. It was a beautiful music station. Yeah. So it was one of those stations where it's it's elevator music. Yeah. So I only had to come on every 15 minutes and give the time and temperature. Right. N never even use my name. So you know, it was one of, how and did I you fuck that up? And I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't good enough for that. So yeah, so they fired me and I thought, boy, now what do I do? Yeah. But I'd made some friends there who were over at another radio station. That led to me going over there and, and uh, talking to the program Still director. Still in Cleveland? Still in Cleveland. Okay. Yeah, I ended up working five different radio stations in the Cleveland market. Okay. Over a period of ten years, uh -huh. and uh, and this was uh, in uh, 1976. Okay. I went over to the second station, and they they hired me. Yeah. Uh, again, with very little experience, but put me on again midnight to six. This seemed right. to be my my well, slot. You, you it, want your niche? Oh yeah, and I, I think <laughs> your, I found it at that niche. point. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I was working midnight to six, but it was a disco station mm -hmm. in 1976, and. Uh, and I had a blast there, actually playing disco overnights. And then they moved me to seven to midnight. Disco. Did that, did that for about six or eight months. And yeah. then they gave me morning drive. They put me on morning drive, in Cleveland, a you know fairly large market back in the day. And um, and so I did morning drive for about a year uh -huh. at this uh, big FM station, which was still a disco station. And uh, yeah, and then that uh, turned out. And then I got an offer at another radio station. There was an AM top forty station, a little bigger, a little more money. Went and did that for a year in '78 and. And then uh, quit radio, tr trying to decide, you know, whether I wanted to continue doing radio or I was still having this acting thing that I wanted to okay. wanted to pursue. You had the bug, you yeah. had the urge. But then I got hired away uh, at another uh, <clears throat> big FM station, a rock station this time around, uh, in Cleveland in 1979. And so I took that, did that, was a production director there for a while, and uh, made, made a. And about how old were you? Um, in 79. Well, no, no, I was 25. 
Yeah, I was going to say, you probably yeah. know exactly yeah. how, how old you were in 72. Yeah, because I'm thinking I was born in 50. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, no Bo's the mathematician. Bo's a, yeah, we, we should have had the ballot come in have and have figure that out. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Thank you. Uh, uh, so 25, you're 25. kind of directing in a, a movie, a, a radio station. Uh, yeah, well, I was I, well, I was a production director. Okay. Yeah, producing the radio spots and such. And that was when I... Uh, put together my first demo tape for doing voiceover. And you say tape. It was, was that, a t- yes, oh, it was actually I, on reel to reel tape. Yeah, kids. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I suppose that's a dying technology. Now. I think so. Is that right? I'm not sure. Because I mean, I'm thinking that people are still yeah, quarter inch tape. Yeah. Square boxes. Yeah. yeah and you picture cut on the with front. Razor blades. Yeah, razor blades. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, mm-hmm. so there we are in '79 and and. Uh, and I put together my first demo tape, and I and I started taking around to ad agencies in Cleveland. Okay. And I actually started getting a little work. Yeah. And uh, ah, well, this is fun, you know. I don't have to work six days a week, and yeah. that didn't happen right away. But after several years, you know, I, I was making more money at a radio at uh, voiceover than I was at a radio station. So how <clears throat> you say several years? I mean, how pretty much how many years did from the first time you made your demo tape back then to when you were making a living at it? About what was the okay the span? Uh, three or four years. Okay, all right. So in the, Cleveland, just in Cleveland. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I wasn't even branching out into Detroit and Pittsburgh and Columbus. Were, and that were kind of thing. you and were you in the union back then? Yeah. At that point. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, I had joined after uh, and SAG and Equity uh, by. Let me see. That would have been by about seventy six or seventy seven. I joined. So you were you were doing theater as well. Well, if you know what, I was, exactly. yes, I was, and I was doing a lot of community theater at the time, and uh, actually got my equity card by by not actually being in a production, but by understudying for Robert Urich. Oh, oh yeah. really? In a big summer stock really? uh, theater back in Cleveland, yeah. For... But, uh, Robert Urich was, uh, what what series was he oh, on back then? I knew you oh, I'm sorry, then. yeah, because I, <laughs> usually I'm pretty good at coming up with a series. It was, he was a detective or something, yeah. wasn't he? What? Vegas. Vegas. Vegas, yeah, 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 yeah. Vegas. Yeah. Jim Davy, ladies and gentlemen. Jim Davy. Coming up with the, Thank you. the 1970s television references. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, I understudied for Robert Urich, never went on, but got my equity card um, by doing that one summer, in the summer of 80 or 81. Now, have you, have you done other theater and used your equity card? Well, it, well he, Since yeah, then. He, here's, here's the funny story. Okay. Yeah, I did a lot of theater after that yeah. in Cleveland, and the last play that I had done was Pirates of Penzance in, in the summer of 1983. Really? I sang, yeah, I sang the role of Frederick in that. Okay. And, and then I moved out here in 84, never did any theater out here. There's not a lot I, of theater out here to do. No, really. no, but I mean, I came out to act. And yeah. I wanted to do movies and TV and stuff. Sure. And I thought oh, I could do some theater, too, because I love doing theater. Yeah. Never did any until this past summer. I did yeah, my well, first, the, the new which, look, is, right? which is why the mustache. Is it on straight? Because usually, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, it is. yeah okay. the glue is, is doing its <laughs> Yeah, time. so yeah, it is. Because usually you, you had long, kind of wavy hair right. and that boyish face. Right. That, and, that yeah. we all love. And, and no must, no facial yeah. hair. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I've you're never a very good-looking man. Why? Thank you. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody ever tell you that you look like, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You actually look like John Gruden. You ever get that? No. John Gruden from ESPN Monday Night Football. No, coach. No, no. Oh man, you know, Bill, ever... what about Bill Farmer? Bill, Far- that? Bill that Farmer. That I look like yeah. Bill Farmer. Oh, if you got or the that three, you look you like. No, Bill you. Farmer. No, I don't look yeah. like Bill Farmer. Crazy, you do. That's an insult to Bill I'm Farmer. I'm sorry. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. So I so I, so, so I so I did this play, and um, I was in. Uh, uh, Our Wilderness, Eugene oh, O'Neill play at I know, Actors Co-op, I know. Uh, yeah. and we we closed uh, just a month ago, and 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 so I grew this mustache for this play, the first play that I had done in thirty years, yeah. since nineteen eighty three, yeah, and uh, had a blast doing it. But it was you're asking about equity, yeah. It was uh, it was a small equity uh, house, yeah. so I actually got paid so to you, be on you, stage. You got to use that as, equity as, so, as, as I got this first time. I actually got paid to use my equity card. Now let me ask you this had you been paying dues all those years yes <laughs> you know what i have too yeah i have too so I what equity I, I haven't done an equity play right. in 30 years right right but right. i just can't bring myself not to me too yeah me too. it's, it's it took, nothing it because if so you're not get, if, if, you know? yeah if you're, if you're not working you're paying you yeah. know 40 bucks a year yeah, or something a year, yeah, but whatever. uh but yes i've been paying all these years and so i finally got my first paycheck in fact it was it was 77 dollars 
<laughs> was my first paycheck. Wow. Yeah. It was for, uh, I think, uh, seven performances. Well, or, 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 screw or, or, this whole yeah. voiceover thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's LABC to go to hell at this point. I'm thinking this is this is my this is my new my, my my new direction <laughs> so yeah so i'm gonna frame that 77 dollar check so so you got started uh when you came out here then okay yeah you, you got started primarily in commercials well what happened was yeah after i after i realized that i had quite a career going in voiceover back in cleveland right. it finally got to the point in 1984 when i'd been uh at uh, on the radio for about 10 years at that point i was making more money a year doing my freelance voice stuff mm -hmm. than i was on the radio and i mm -hmm. thought this doesn't make any sense yeah. so i quit radio was just planning on freelancing uh around the cleveland area and uh and literally two, three weeks after I quit the radio station, the house that we had been renting back in Cleveland, uh, I got a call from the landlord saying he was selling the house. Uh -huh. And we had to be out by September. Now, this was in uh, July oh my of God. 84. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I'm married. I got three kids. And I got to, you know, figure out what to do. Where am Don't I going to land? Now, you now have 100 children. I have 103. Yeah. And three. Now. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so... Uh, so we had to be settled someplace by September. Mm -hmm. um, so I quickly started, you know, trying to think what to do. And I'd always wanted to make a move to either New York or L.A. Okay. And I had several people encouraging me to take that opportunity and come out to L.A. and just look around. Yeah. And, and so I did. After the Olympics uh, in 84, uh, the f uh, closing weekend, I came out here, looked around, looked around uh, f just for a place to live, found a little place to rent over in Glendale. And literally two weeks later, we were living here. Wow. Pulled in the first week of September of 84. And uh, so and never no back. agents, no, no agent, no, no prospects. I knew you just, one, you just came I knew here. one person out here. OK. Uh, at that point. That was, that's kind of a ballsy thing to do. That, yeah. That and had, I thought we had enough money saved up, but it was yeah. enough money to last about three months. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. And, it's a little uh, more expensive than Cleveland. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were going through from, from, a, from a, a house that we were renting for 350 bucks a month to 1100 bucks a month. Yeah. And it was like, holy cow, this is a different life now. OK. Yeah. And uh, yeah. But you know what? Uh, through this uh, through this uh, friend that I had out here, uh, she was with an agent, Special Artists. OK. Uh, I remember Special Back Artists. in those days. They're, they're was, still around. It was, too, it was yeah. Doug Ely at the time. Right. And uh, Jeff Danis was there. Was their um, voice, really? voiceover agent? Okay. He had just come from New York, like two, three months earlier. Okay. For for those of you who don't know, Jeff Danis is now with DPN, and he's quite. He quite is a, DPN. He's he is DPN. DPN. He's, DPN. He is uh, uh, quite the big agent here. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, my first week in town. I mean, I'd literally been here three, maybe four days. Went and uh, uh, had a meeting with Doug Ely, the on-camera agent at the time, and. Uh, and he said, yeah, this looks great. We'd, we'd love to handle you. Um, but I see from your resume that you've done some voiceover work. Do you have a tape? And I said, sure. And so I gave him my tape. And he said, our, 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 our voice agent's not in right now, but, uh, but I'll make sure he listens to it. Okay. By the time I got home from that meeting, yeah. there was an, a message on my answering machine from Jeff yeah. saying, I just listened to your tape. Sorry I missed you. Whatever you do, don't sign with anybody until you come and talk to me. That's a that's a good uh, endorsement. Isn't I'm it? like, all right, yeah. So I went and I talked to him the next day and ended up just signing with him. Nice. Yeah, and uh, and and I'm still with him here almost 30 years. You're later. still at DPN. Yeah, now. Still in DPN. Okay. Yeah. And you went you you followed like ICM. And you know, DPN? I I didn't follow him right away because he no? left several months later uh -huh. to start the department at ICM with Bob okay. Coleman all right. uh, in late '84. And uh, wanted me to go with him. I had signed this contract with special artists, and I've been being this Midwest boy that thought, I'd like to break a contract. Yes. I mean, my word is law. My word is yeah. sacred. Yeah, so I said, you know what? I, I think I'll just wait out my year contract, and, and then I'll, I'll come over. Well, I ended up staying a special artist for, for four years. They were okay. very good to me, wonderful people. Elaine Craig was my agent. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, Kathy Zukoski at the time, now Kathy Kalmanson. Oh, all right. Was my agent yeah. uh, also. Uh, Libby Westby was there. Um, just some great people, uh, you know, who were the vo in the voice department over there. And, uh, yeah, and I did a lot of on-camera commercials, too, my yeah. first hmm, four or five years. In fact, I think that's where I met you, didn't I? Weren't you? Could be. Weren't you casting? Uh, uh, I was never casting. I'm not a casting guy, but I've always worked in casting. I've always been a freelance director 
Uh, but I did do on camera over at uh, Sheila Manning. That's where I met you a yeah. hundred years ago. hundred years ago. I yeah. knew it. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Sheila Manning's. No. And, and we're, if, we're going back, aren't we? <laughs> a, few, a few years, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but it was, uh, so I, I did on camera stuff and a bunch of on camera spots while now, the voiceover thing was taken off. Too. Now, no, but. Uh, I did a little research. You, uh -oh. were, you also did game shows. Oh, uh, no. Right? You were on Password Plus? Uh, Super Password. Super Password. Was that with the Burt <laughs> yeah, Convy yeah, years? Yeah, yeah. The Burt no, Convy no. years? Uh, wait. Uh, Which one was Super was Password? Burt Convy? Yeah, I guess maybe it was. Was it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember the host. Oh, did you I can't win? Believe I, gave... I won 200 bucks in a bedspread. <laughs> Yeah, there, there you, you go. go. <laughs> and a little bit of house paint and, yeah. and all the hair dryers and curling irons I could use. I, I've always wanted to win flooring. Flooring. <laughs> <laughs> mine, mine was just about as good. Yeah. Now, I was, on, I was on Shop Till You Drop years ago. Okay. And I won the whole thing. Where you, whole where you had a whole bunch of shopping carts you could just keep no, filling them up? Is no, that you, I don't know. We had to do wacky stunts and then at the end you run up the stairs and I was winded by the end of it. But, but you won. But we won like a but here's the thing. I went on with a, just a friend of mine. It wasn't me and my wife. All right. This friend said, hey, my husband won't do it. Will you do it with me? Yeah, sure. They're never going to let us on. We're actors, you know? <laughs> so, but we got on. So before the show. And come to find out it's actors they want. Yeah. Well, yeah. of course. Right. Yeah. So before the show, though, she goes, listen, if we win a trip, can I have it? Can I have the trip? I'm like, yeah, sure. Take the trip. I, you know, I'm never going to, we're never going to win anyway, you know? Right. Well, sure enough, <laughs> we win the whole shebang. And I'm thinking, how how good could the trip be? It's probably <laughs> Vegas or New York or something. It's, it's like, line. you're going to London, England. No way. <laughs> and actually, on the game show, you see my face go, yeah, I gave that away. <laughs> <laughs> Going to London, yeah. So, uh, so I found it interesting that you came out here and did the the game show thing. So I did a, a game show because I had heard that you could go and maybe make a little money on yeah. these things, and yeah. that they were looking for real people, but also you know didn't turn away actors. Yeah, because they they, they, you know, they wanted to be entertained. Right. So, uh, so yeah, so I went down there. I'd only been here just a couple of months, and uh, that's where I met Cam Clark. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah, another a, a uh, fellow turtle. Ninja turtle. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, okay. And. Uh, Cam uh, got on the game show also, and you know they, you know. No, how wait, they, you they, guys they were, were on the same game we, show. We weren't on the same day, but we oh, were in okay. the same so talent you were in that pool. pool for that the week. pool, yeah, for the week, the exactly. That is that is so funny. <laughs> That's man. where I met Cam. And oh then, my gosh! And years later, you know, of course, we ended up in Ninja Turtles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What did you win? That yeah, is so did, spread, did Cam yeah. win? Did Cam win? Uh, a little more than I did, but not not not, much. not the big stuff. <laughs> not the big stuff. Okay. But yeah. Alan Ludden, Betty White, they were gone. Yeah, they, they were, were gone. gone, and I can't remember what it was Burke Combi. All I remember is it was Gopher was my partner. Oh, yeah, Fred Grandy. Uh, yeah, Fred Grandy. Grandy. Yeah, Fred yeah, Grandy. Was my, was my partner. the love boat. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't particularly helpful. No? I remember. <laughs> no? Who, who was the other <laughs> celebrity? Do you I, I don't remember. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now, but, you know, you can catch the show on Game Show Network. Oh, can you really? It still runs. Like, could I could you still YouTube have, it? I, I don't maybe, know. Maybe YouTube. you kids with the YouTube out there can with track the, with down. With a YouTube. With the YouTube. Thing. Yeah. Yeah, maybe try you to, could find it. Try to track down Count, Townsend and Cam out there. Now, there were a couple commercials that caught caught my eye on the IMDb when I went on there. All right. Uh, you were a Keebler elf. Mm-hmm. A, a couple of them, yeah. A over, of over them? a couple of sessions, like, yeah. Like, again, uh, back in the very early days, I was just getting going. And with who? Who was the lead? Harley Bear. Harley Bear. Used who was the, the mayor he, he, on the Andy Griffith show? Right. <laughs> Parley was uh, was uh, Ernie the Elf. Yes. Ernie, right. Yeah. The, you know that. the little head elf regular guy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, any number of us who were doing animation at the time were 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 doing uh, Keebler elves and raid bugs, you know. Raid. Right. Right. That, that was the other thing. I was going to raid bugs. I, do you remember what bug you were? <laughs> All I remember is going raid. Yeah. <laughs> I would have loved to have been a raid bug. Yeah. Wouldn't that have been amazing? <laughs> I mean, were you just calling your friends? Going, oh, I'm, I'm a raid bug. <laughs> nah, you're not gonna believe this. Guess who this is? Raid. <laughs> I love that. I love it. Okay, well, look, we got to do a little commercial here. Oh, we got to sell wait. something. Okay. Do I have to do it? Am I gonna do the VO for it? Uh, sure, no. you want yeah. to? No, no, oh, okay. I'm kidding here. All right, so we're we're gonna cut away. Okay. Oh, right. first, first, we got to do uh, our sponsors, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, our Sponsors are, ladies and gentlemen. Here, here we go, <laughs> right here. All right, it's Thai boy. Here we I go. love that Thai, man. <laughs> oh, and Fortaleza. For, Fortaleza. 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 The best goddamn Fortaleza. tequila I've ever had. Yeah. Wait, okay. where are my glasses? <laughs> okay. There we go. All right. Okay. 
Right. Do you guys have anything to say? Weren't you gonna say something? Okay, all right. Well, that's good enough. Well, that bottle's half gone. <laughs> the master is much kinder to me and hits me less after a good <laughs> shot of a laser. That's very good. Much kinder and hits me less. That's very true. Boy, you don't, you don't, well, get, you don't get a better endorsement some, than that. Sometimes the boy needs to be disciplined. That's all I can say. Sometimes a little spanking hey, is all it takes. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, go on out and buy A Christmas Carol uh, starring, uh, oh, Maurice LaMarche and Rob Paulson, okay? <laughs> And uh, please, it's the Christmas season. For God's sakes, buy this thing so we can make some money off of it, okay? Mm -hmm. We'll be right go. back after this break. Jim Davis. This holiday season, bring home a new twist on a timeless story. Introducing an all-new radio drama. Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol. Relive the classic tale featuring the voice talents of Maurice LaMarche as Scrooge, Rob Paulson as Cratchit, Neil Flynn, Robbie Rist, Quentin Flynn, and introducing Elon Garfius as Tiny Tim. A Christmas Carol, produced by Shane Salk and William Holmes, directed by William Holmes. Order your copy today at Amazon.com and the iTunes Store. Donna Summer. Me. Yeah, you I know what? That was the going. only disco song I didn't know. <laughs> you you, well, now, you, you well, grabbed you somebody your ass. I had um, no idea what you <laughs> Hey, uh, a Christmas carol, everybody, and in Spanish, too. There you go. Oh, Ruben Garfius is the star of that one. Okay, so <laughs> we're back. We are back with uh, Townsend Coleman, and uh, we were talking about a lot of the commercials he did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then you uh, you somehow got into promos. Did you get into animation or promos first? Uh, animation. Oh, you got to I started with animation in uh, 80. No, yeah, in fact, that was one of the f very first gigs I got when I moved here. Really? Because I moved here in September of 84. Six months later, got an audition for Inspector Gadget. I was, uh, yeah. In March, of, in March of 85. Here. Went and auditioned for this thing. You were Inspector Gadget. No, no, he was no, a, no, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> was that someone else? Yes, that, that was, was that, that, that was um, Don, Don I, I know. So, I know. Okay, I thought. I just wanted don't to tell have, me he doesn't know this. Just, <laughs> I just wanted to have a little fun with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make me just freak when, out. That was not listen, me. It really when I, me. When I don't know something about you, I look over that kid over there. He's <laughs> going to tell me because he's been lecturing me all day. I've been making mistakes. All right. So you did Inspector Gadget first. I did Inspector. It was my first show. Yeah, six months after I got here. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I got, they ju had just written this uh, little character in for the last ten episodes of the series. Uh, his name was Corporal Cape Man. And uh, I went in, I looked at the the picture of him, I thought, well, I know what he sounds like. You know, he's buck teeth. Uh, what, what, and what did he sound Well, he sounded like this. <laughs> Inspector Gadget, Corporal Cape Man, doing his duty. Your duty. Doing my duty. And did he duty? <laughs> he dutied all over that. <laughs> I, I just that. dutied all over that. Yeah, there we go. We gotta, oh, hey, my. gotta go for the duty joke, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that was so. So I got into animation in '85 w with no plans on doing cartoons. Uh -huh. It just how, was an now, audition how, that came up. How did you the, get into the promo stuff then? Again, fell into it. Happened to be in Jeff's office. All right. So basically, yeah. you're saying for all the kids out there kids who want to do this, so if, you if do... you're the luckiest son of a bitch in the world, <laughs> world. we just had just... Ek Amati on here, and he kept going, "Well, you know, that's interesting because I just happened to, to be, be in the right place." At well, the right... I hate to say it, but that's that's all. My biggest gigs that I've ever gotten have all come out of something like that. Okay. That, you know, oh, by the way, could you do a, yeah. you know, I don't want to have to go through this big casting thing, you know, I mean, I was, I mean, that's how I got uh, the 7-Up Dot. Oh, you, you they were the, did, they, what did, did they say? What did you say? What did you say? The seven well, I forgot that one. Yeah. Totally I mean, but that one came out of, uh, 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 I was doing the uh, uh, announce on Kellogg's Frosted Flakes. And I was over doing a session at L.A. Studios one day for Frosted Flakes. And the guy uh, in from Leo Burnett in Chicago, yeah. where they had the 7-Up account, says to me, you know, uh, are you familiar with this character? And uh, I said, yeah, kind of, sort of. You know, he's just gibberish and talks. Yeah. And, and he said, uh, we got to recast it because the, uh, the guy who created that character is the creative director at our agency. He's leaving. 
and we can't keep using them. Uh, and uh, I don't want to have to go through a big casting thing. And I know yeah. you do a lot of animation. Could, could you, would you mind? This is the gig. Yeah, would, would, would you mind? Would you mind making a million just, dollars? Just, just, <laughs> just laying down a little demo so I could take it back to the office. I yeah. said, no. So I did a little of that gibberish for him. Yeah. And two days later, I got a call from my agent saying, you got a seven up session. And it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, that all my, all my biggest gigs have, have come out of that kind of situation. Okay, you know, you know what I so got I mean, out of that situation? What? I was at my agent's office. She goes, let me see your hands. And I became a hand model. <laughs> I got to be a hand model. You, really? you got to be the dot on the 7-Up commercial. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, kismet. But, the, but, so, but so that's how I got my the NBC gig, too. Because, again, okay, like yeah, tell, animation... Tell me about that. Like animation, had, I, had, I had no uh, uh, preconceived notion that I was going to be... Because the promo world is a oh, very difficult world oh, to break into. Small, and the kids out yeah. there, they're always taking promo classes and this yeah, and that. But, yeah, yeah. but it's just and a back few in, guys, And this right? was back in 1993. And back in those days, it really was just a handful of guys. You yeah. know? I mean, it was Danny Dark and Ernie Anderson and Mark Elliott. And, you know, they were the voices of the... You know, various networks and stuff, right. and I never in a million years perceived myself as having that kind of voice or persona, you know, and so I never had any yeah. I- imaginations that I was going to go on to do promo, right, right. but I happened to be standing in Jeff's office one day yeah. when he gets a call from a guy at NBC in August of 93, and yeah. I'm literally standing there, <laughs> and I hear Jeff say, no, he'll never do it, here. but I have a guy standing here who I think would be perfect for it. Really? So Jeff says to me here, just it, just it, it, let him describe to you what he's looking for, and then just do it for him. So I, t- I hand the phone. He says, "Yeah, now, wait a minute. Looking you looking know, for. that's an agent. That yeah. is an agent. Okay, <laughs> and I and, like that. And he is. Yeah. And I tell you. And so, which is why I'm still with him. Yeah. And uh, and, and and so the guy t- told described for me what he was looking for, and I did a little sample for him over the phone. He says, "Hey, that sounds great. Would you mind coming over here and trying that on a promo?" Yeah. Which I had never done before. Right. And but was a big fan of him, uh, and was a huge fan of Danny Darks, one okay. of my idols at the yeah. time, because he did so much great. He just had such a great sound. He, now, a great I, voice. I, you know, I know uh, Ernie and and Mark. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not familiar with Danny. You, Danny you, was the voice of, of NBC at the of time. Of NBC at the yeah, time. And, okay. And he'd right. been there for about ten years or so at that point. Okay. I think. Because uh, yeah, Casey Kasem had been there before that. Right. Right. And, right. Uh, and and I've always been a big fan of voices, but but. But not so much the cartoon stuff, except the big guys like Mel Blanc and Dust right, Butler. Sure. But um, but but strangely enough, the announcers. Mm-hmm. And I and I think and this is going to sound nutty, but, but I think partly because my parents actually met while working at NBC in New York. Okay. In the early fifties, they yeah. were both working at Thirty Rock, and my dad's goal was to be an announcer for the network. Oh really? So he was totally into the. He never he never did it. Moved yeah. us to Denver in 1955. Sure, yeah. But he got on the radio there and was. I, he was always fascinated with voices <clears throat> himself, and so I think I grew up with this kind of this stuff just in the air, you know. So I've always been fascinated with voices, and back when I was a kid, you know, t- t- 10, 11, 12 years old, uh, uh, fascinated with radio, and DJs, and just the just the sound that the the, the uh, just the imagination that it took. Yeah. You know, and the power that I thought voices had. So I've always been a big fan of it, was a big fan of Danny Darks. So, um, but Danny was the voice of Chevy, he was the voice of Anheuser Bush, he was the voice oh, wow. of so many big accounts back, yeah. back in those days. Um, so he asked me if I could come over and just try this, you know, on, on a promo. And I said, sure, when? And he said, like now? And so I literally l- left ICM, which uh-huh. is where Jeff was at the time, and uh, drove over the hill over to Burbank. Went downstairs, sat in Danny Dark's chair, put on Danny Dark's headphones. Oh, wow. Sat at Danny Dark's <laughs> mic. I mean, this is how That's Danny cool. how much Danny Dark was in my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, but I felt strangely comfortable about it because even though I'd never done a network TV promo, my my years in radio uh, just made me real comfortable with the timing yeah. and the script. And, and then I, Danny a... walked in and cracked you across the head and said, get the hell out of my chair. What are you, <laughs> what are you thinking? You, <laughs> and you, it just you shattered your whole, whole thoughts of Danny. Well, so, yeah, so I, um, so I did that. They liked what I did. They ended up putting it on the air that night. Oh, my God. And it was the first must-see TV promo. 
because they were starting this campaign yeah. called, and, they, and they're explaining this to me. We're, we've got this new campaign we're starting for the November sweeps called Must See TV. And okay. Explain the whole thing. We don't want an announcer sound. We, we want it what just kind, more what conversational. What kind of shows were going then? Uh, okay, so, uh, Seinfeld. Oh, okay, and, right, and, uh, yeah. And uh, I think Frasier was on the air. Friends. Uh, Friends. Yeah. Uh, no, Friends didn't come along till for another year or two because oh, okay. I actually did the, the upfront presentation for this new show called Friends. Oh, did you really? Yeah. So that was pretty bizarre, and I've kept all these scripts. I got oh, all yeah. my old scripts. Well, I mean, it's historic. I mean, yeah. it's like yeah. museum type stuff. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, but 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 that that promo turned into another one the week later, and a week later, and then I was doing all the promos on uh, Tuesday night. That because yeah. well, that first one was to launch the John Larroquette show okay. in '93, and um, and then I, by within three months, uh, come Halloween of '93, they called me at home at seven o'clock on a Friday night yeah. and said. You know, Townsend, um, Jay Leno has been sort of getting his butt whooped by Letterman this past year that he's been on the air, and they want to try a little different thing with the promos. They want to actually take bits from the show that he tapes that day, put it into a promo, 20-second promo that night, and they want you to voice these things. I'm like, you're kidding. Uh, like, when? And they you're said, well, kidding. we want you to start Monday, but you got to commit for five weeks. Oh, wow. For the November sweeps, okay. five nights a week, you got to be here at seven o'clock. You can't be late, and because we got to uh, we got to announce this L- thing. Was mix it live it. on the show? Or? It wasn't live on the show, but, but it they was mixed the, it and the, then they the, put the, it. And they the satellite it right back to New right. York, so okay. it could be on the air in that last half hour of prime time. So I said, sure. So and and I'm thinking as he's describing this to me, ooh, five nights a week for five weeks. It's a little confining, but. Okay. Yeah. And so I, and so I it went in that It beats a sharp Monday. stick in the eye. I yeah. Mean, yeah. So I went and I did that, and at the end of the five weeks, uh, and again, this is for the November sweeps of 93, uh, they just didn't tell us to stop. And so I ended up doing all those uh, Tonight Show promos for 16 years. Oh the 16 years Lord. that I was at NBC. Man. Doing all the musty TV stuff, yeah. That's pretty cool. Uh, it was way cool. It was the 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 like one of the best jobs I ever had in my life. Well, now, so before we before we get into the cartoon stuff, which I know everybody wants to hear about <laughs> this cartoon stuff, um, now you're doing now you're working for ABC. Now I'm doing ABC because NBC <clears throat> let me go four years ago. Okay. In uh, September of 2009, on 9/11 was my last <laughs> was my last night there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, somehow so your every own year tower rolls, came yeah, crashing so, down. Somehow yeah. 9/11 rolls around every year and yeah. I remember that. I don't yeah. know why. But uh yeah, so they let me go um back, I stopped back hand back. modeling the night In- Elvis died. <laughs> And somehow, it's very every, sim- well, every 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 year that rolls around. I apologize. Uh, I don't mean to offend any 911 people. There you go. There. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so but I was doing a lot of other promo stuff uh, yeah. in addition to NBC. I've been I had been doing the live with uh, Regis and Kelly spots uh, back then. I was I've been mm-hmm. doing the Judge Judy radio spots every every sweeps for okay. the past probably 16, 18 years, something like that. Um, and so I, I was I was still doing that, but boy, losing NBC was a huge oh, yeah. loss. Not yeah. so much. I mean, yes, the income, lo- losing the income was, was hard, but because they had become my family. Yeah, right. You know, for over 16 years, uh, I loved these people dearly, and I, you know, was seeing them every day. And it was the last gig, by the way, that that I had where I actually had to leave my house and go someplace. Yeah. Because I went in for the Tonight Show every night um, to do those promos actually down at NBC. Okay. So once they let me go, it's like I didn't have any more gigs that I had to go yeah. to because we're all doing our stuff from, from yeah, our right, houses right, now. Yeah, right, right, you know? right. So you start living in a cave, basically. Yeah. But uh, two years ago, um, a year and a half ago, uh, ABC uh, picked me up. So okay. I've been doing comedies for them. This year I launched uh, five comedies for them. What was the audition press? I mean, was it just your agent it, suggested it, kind of a thing? And Yeah, it, it wasn't an audition. They okay. actually hired me uh, a year and a half ago in May of, what's this, two, of 2012 to do um, some upfronts. Mm-hmm. That year, for a couple of shows that they were launching, one was called The Neighbors, okay, and uh, and and another show that didn't get picked up, but they uh, then they had me do all the the launch promos for The Neighbors through that summer, and then once the show went on the air, uh, they had me do the episodics every week too. Oh, wow. So here I found myself on another major network, which was very bizarre to me because by that time I was doing a lot of ABC Family stuff, yeah, and a lot of stuff for the Hub, um, but. 
not a major network. I thought those days were over for yeah. me, you know, because, I mean, once you're identified as closely with one network as I was with NBC for so long, I thought nobody's going to pick me up for another one. But yeah. uh, they did. God bless them, and they've kept me busy since. And, yeah, I love it. So you're back in the saddle. I'm back in the saddle. Back in the saddle. Yeah. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, Jim Davies drum solo. Jim Davy, ladies and gentlemen, drum solo. cat from mute math to run for his money <laughs> that is one of my favorite things about this show is jim davies drum solo yeah. uh fortaleza i i could use some fortaleza do, do you mind uh, bringing some in you, you may want to get the bottle or you may want to get your glasses am i gonna have a little Come, come on, over, come on, come on hey, around Billy, here. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if you've noticed, but yeah. every time this bottle comes yeah. out, there's less and less liquid well, in the, it. What, what's that is. about? I know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the balance, the balance is a little dusting. Okay, nice. thank you, Fortaleza. Ooh. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Oh, <laughs> he took a, a little, little cookie for your trouble. Oh. Mm. Fortaleza. 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 Oh, uh, here's here's to here's to ABC picking my, you up again, man. That thank you, my friend. Ah, <laughs> mm. mm. oh, that's good. Let's talk a little bit about the early cartoons. We 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 touched on it with uh, Inspector Gadget. Right. That's okay. My first show. Yep. Um, and uh, that character was again uh, Corporal Cape Man. And and how long did you do that? Was it a regular? I just did ten episodes. Ten episodes. And we did them all in, o over the course of maybe um, six weeks. Yeah. Uh, back in '85, uh, and um, yeah, and they were all buyouts. Okay. It was Deke. And oh, uh, so then all of a sudden I, right, I, started, right. I started seeing all this money roll in in the summer of 85. And I had just gotten my first on-camera national network TV spot. Mm -hmm. You know how those things pay. Yeah. And uh, and I did my first little. Well, I, I used to. You used to know how those <laughs> yeah. things back. Yeah, things yeah, are a little those, different these but, days. But those sometimes. but those residuals, man. You <laughs> yeah. Know, that, oh. So we, between the residuals for that uh, craft uh, TV bar, uh, the craft barbecue sauce TV spot, and uh, Inspector Gadget, and I had done a little a, a two line part in a movie with Tommy Lee Jones. What, what, movie? All, what movie? It's called Black Moon Rising. Oh. Okay. Look it up, kids. Yeah. Look yeah. At, uh, I'm a waiter. They're stealing the cars. Oh my God! They're stealing the cars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, so I saw all this dough rolling in in that summer, and I thought I, you know, I'd made it. And of course, it all dried up, you know, by the fall. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was back to borrowing money from my mom to pay the rent. But, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. But then, uh, but then, but then, it picked then up you again. you were in. Uh, I saw Transformers. Yeah, I did Transformers. The original Transformers. The, the original Transformers. And then. Yeah, back then, it, and then, then I, in, so Generation 1, I did a character called Rewind, and then I just did, uh, well, not just, I mean, it was like five years ago. Now, yeah, but, but, but for, for a us, of, it's just. For, for a, it does feel like just <laughs> yeah, these days. Even, yeah. even Jim feels that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jim, Jim, Jim's over there, yeah, this is five years ago, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I did Transformers Animated. Yeah. Right. As Sentinel Prime uh, for a couple of seasons on that uh, okay. for Cartoon Network. Is that kind of cool going back and forth? It was from... great, yeah. yeah. And what's great, too, is, you know, the fans are just so rabid for these shows, especially some of the old ones. Yeah. Um, that, you know, you go to Comic-Con or they, they've all got their own conventions now. And, mm -hmm. and so... Uh, I, do, you, do you go to those? I do. do you go to the I, conventions? And I love them. Yeah, I was just telling Bo the valet that, uh, <laughs> who's who's from England, England, um, that, uh, you know, last, that's last an week. island nation. It is. I yeah. just discovered that. We yeah, were just chatting that? about that. It's, it's I didn't know. Island. I didn't. Yeah. It's all by itself. Okay, I'm sorry. It's floating there in the middle of we're, the ocean. We're not here just to entertain, but we're here to educate, <laughs> to educate as thank well. You. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so last year I went over to this big Transformers convention in oh, England really? called Auto Assembly. And oh, they're in having England. me back again next uh, next year, yeah. So they fly you to England. They fly me to England. Expenses paid. 
whole thing. Yeah. And you meet the queen. And I meet the queen. Do you meet the yeah. queen? Nah, Mister. Have you met that? Much. You have met our little <laughs> right. Inspector Gadget. That's, right. there you go. That's a whole down and never mind. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. So now um, uh, I also saw Fraggle Rock. Who were you on Fraggle, Did Fraggle Rock? Fraggle Rock was Gobo. Gobo. And Arker. <clears throat> Give us a little Gobo. Do you, I mean, can you? Or, or do you need to? Oh, need... Wembley, you're rock dust. Allergies all in your head. I remember that. He's a little, yeah, he's the little yeah. orange guy, a little, yeah, yeah, little yeah. head fraggle. Yeah. You remember Gobo? Oh, he's out going. Do you remember? Yeah. No? You didn't watch Going that? into outer oh. space, looking for his uncle, traveling mad. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. That's Gobo. And then uh, Teen Wolf. That was Teen Wolf. That was just me talking. Yeah. Was it really? But, yeah, it really was. I mean, I wasn't trying to do a Michael 12. J. Yeah, when I was. Yeah. When I wasn't trying to do a Michael J. Fox impression because I can't do impressions to save my life. But they they didn't want an impression, which right. is why I got it, I guess. You can't. So you couldn't just, do like Jimmy Stewart. No, do I Jimmy couldn't Stewart. do. No, come on. <laughs> I keep telling you. Just, just give it a little Jimmy Stewart. Little, little come on, Jimmy Stewart. Oh, oh there you go. There's an impression. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. I tell you, I try to do impressions and <laughs> dance for they're, grandma. They're, 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 dance for no, grandma. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Come on, honey. Bark, <laughs> yeah, bark. Yeah, then roll over. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, yeah. It's, it's sometimes that's how I get some of my my characters trying to do these. Now impressions. you also did. So you also did uh, like an appearance on Pinky and the Brain. Didn't you do something on? I Pinky? did a couple episodes of Pinky and the Brain. Oh wait, I'm well, sorry. Well, uh, uh, dreadfully sorry to interrupt, sir. And uh, Mr. Steven Spielberg is at the door. I, you know what? Tell Mr. Spielberg I'm a, I'm busy with Townsend Coleman. Give him the old Martin Scorsese treatment. Right yes. away, sir. <laughs> Mar Marty Scorsese. Give him the yeah. Marty Scorsese yeah. treatment. Earlier it was a different director, but I'll but, go with Marty Scorsese. Because now yeah. I'm wondering where he's going to come up with for the Scorsese <laughs> bit we had earlier. You know, <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly like rehearse. <laughs> was it? Fun part. Yeah. Okay, so uh, see what we're doing? We're doing bits with the kid. Uh, I'm loving the bits with the kid. Because he's from England. Hey, let's do another commercial real quick, ladies and gentlemen. Wait a minute. Oh, Fortaleza. Fortaleza. The best goddamn tequila I've ever had. And we'll get very, uh, we'll get Fortaleza. Lisa, back in here. It's not very. Oh, yeah. I, I screwed that up. I, let's play out, Jim. Play me out. Oh, there you go. Did they like the demo? I wouldn't be here if they didn't like it. So they're gonna sign. I make recommendations, not decisions. I've got a southern world. They're the hottest new band around. It's always in bloom. They're like the goggles on steroids, man. Inside my underwear. And two days away when you get to LA. from the biggest break of their careers. Blah, 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 let's get the hell out of here. I'm telling you, ladies, we'll be releasing our first album within the year. But one wrong turn. <laughs> Who was that? I think it was a dog. You'll change everything. Let's just get back in the van, guys. I don't think this road's on the map, Kilda. Looks like you got us lost, Marianne. Elaine! Is somebody there? Take Billy for a walk. Kyle, no! Let's do the Billy. Thank you, man. You guys just stay in the van, all right? Whoa, Phil Spector, where the hell did you get that? I mean, I'm Phil Spector. Brace yourself for the first ever rock and roll horror comedy chick flick. Looks like your little friends are up to something. <laughs> if you catch her, you can keep her. I'm not going down like this. Neither are you. I'm gonna go get your girlfriend. We all have to go sometime. It's not so bad dying. Some of us have to go soon. Yeah! We're a band, we stick together. Still the band. Mother used to say, take care of your feet, and your feet will take care of you. <laughs> Going to the gig. <laughs> Don't forget to bring your axe. It's not so bad, guy. Ladies and gentlemen, stump the band for God's sakes. It makes a great holiday gift. 
There's naked chicks in this. Give it to your kids. It's a great movie for God. You, here, and this Dude. is a gift for you. Thank you. A gift for you. Well, so oh, I made a little that. movie. Yeah. Oh, it looks like a love story, huh? Isn't that it? Sort of. <laughs> yeah, chick flick right here. It's a man's. It? It's a man's love of feet. <laughs> love of feet. Yeah. Okay, I can yeah. hardly wait. Yeah. I'm busting this out as soon as I get home. It's great for the grandchildren. <laughs> there you go. Because you have a few. I'm, you got some grandkids. I got. I got five grandkids. Five grandkids. Yeah. I mean, you still look 12 years old. Yeah. I mean, you. I. I can't believe that. But you, you don't forget. I started early. 20 so, was when I got married. You were 20. 20. You had, had 103. 103 kids. <laughs> I think we've established in fairly, that. In fairly short order. So really, yeah. it's kind of lucky you only have five grandchildren. It is. <laughs> yeah, it's a miracle, in fact. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, how many kids do you really have? I've got four kids. And, four uh, kids. Yeah. And, and they uh, are all adults now. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. My oldest is 38. Oh, my God. Are you kidding yeah, me? Yeah, so they're 38, <laughs> 35, God. 30, and 20, 28. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Now you do a production of Sweeney Todd. You're old enough. <laughs> <laughs> You're old enough now. There you go. I'll do it with you. I'll be Mrs. Lovett. All right. Um, let's go back to your uh, your cartoons, because this, this is the stuff the kids want to talk about right. right here. The Tick. The Tick? The yeah. Tick, okay. Right. You know what? No, actually, young Bo, my valet, yep. he was what telling he me, he, he's been yelling at me, that Ninja Turtles, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, is is more important than The Tick. How do you? What do you feel about that? Well, it certainly went longer, and I think it probably has a much bigger audience. Yeah. But the audience for The Tick yeah. was uh, probably older okay. um, when the show ran. I, I <clears> actually <throat> was a huge fan of The Tick. I love it because my kids were watching it, right. and I thought, oh, my God, this is like a it's very hilarious. sophisticated show. And, and it's hilarious. It's yeah. so well yeah. written. And yeah. your character, I mean, what you did with The Tick was... Uh, now, now uh, I... I'm going to give the writers all the credit. I love right. writers. Okay, right, good right, good right. writing is what it's all about. Were you allowed to kind of embellish on the writing with your character? Or? I, I don't know if it, it was so much a matter of uh, being allowed to. I just didn't want to. The okay. writing was too good. There was no need to try and freshen it up or sweeten it or you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I just went and I'm not a writer anyway, so I okay. wasn't even a, you know playing that playground. Well, I didn't know. Like I a, mean, how how <coughs> how much do you get how much do you improvise with cartoon characters? Very little. Very little? Yeah. Okay. But that's largely because I'm not a writer. And uh -huh. I mean, if there are things that seem like they strike me funny and I'll try something, right. you know, and if it works it works, if it doesn't it doesn't. But okay. um yeah, no, there are, uh, you know, too many other guys who are so good at that. I, it's like, I don't even bother trying. It's like, okay. I pretty much stick to the script. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've, yeah. I've had uh, Maurice and Rob. Well, that's uh, all you need. You they know, you they get... taught a margarita night, which which you're going to come in, in, I'd love in to. 2014. Okay. And uh, kids, sign up, because Townsend's going to be here next year. Okay? I'd love to. Yeah, no, that'd be um, nice. Uh, but them just together was the they're most whole... entertaining thing I've ever they're seen. They're hilarious. Yeah. They really are. Yeah, and doing know? these cartoons sessions for me because I'm not I, I, I'm, I'm not really that quick or that you know what I'm saying I'm right. not a writer I'm not an, I don't do impressions I'm right. not a comedian and so many of these guys are so quick and so smart and so witty and so facile it, it's like I, I'm an audience when well, I go do these sessions but, but you know what this is this is really interesting to me about because you know most of the kids who come to me as a, as a teacher and a coach right Everybody wants to do cartoons. Right. Everybody's like, "Oh, I want to do cartoons." And I always look at them and go, "Yeah, me too." You know, <laughs> you know and I've been yeah. doing this for thirty years. Yeah, me too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. So, so, um, but I think it's interesting that you say that because so many people, I think, feel that they have to be that type of, you know, totally improvise from a comedy background, so on and so forth. And here, here's a really good example of someone, uh, you know, just saying. Uh, outright, hey, you know, I, I'm I'm an actor first, and I take the written right. word, and I work exactly. with the written word. Give me a script, and 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 I and I can try and do my best with whatever sensibilities I've got right. to be able to bring that thing off the page and make it work. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and and, and, and you, you feel? Do you feel it's because of your theater background? I do. I think it's. I, I I think it's my theater background. I think it's my radio background. You know, I used to do characters when I was on the radio. Oh, so did it's you really? Yeah. So it's crazy that I. What didn't... was your favorite character on the radio? <laughs> now I'm interested. Uh, you, <laughs> you know, it was, it was actually a, a character that was not unlike um, uh, the Tick. Oh, really? Really? Yeah. Just kind of a dim-witted. Yeah. Yes. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, 
uh, L- Lieutenant Dink Latrine. <laughs> yeah, and he was very, very sort of officious, and he was kind of one of these guys. You yeah. Know? And very, you know, chop, 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 come on, let's go, move, move, move. Yeah. Sort of thing. Um, but, yeah, so I used to do characters on the on the radio. Okay, let, but, let, let's go back to that. Let, let's explore but never that came, for a but never, but never thought about doing cartoons when I came out here. But that that's true. I, I get that. Right. But let's go back to the radio days now. Okay. And and you were you were every day developing these characters True. and coming up with these bits because you had a hell of a lot of time to fill, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. At, at midnight to six a.m. or yeah. whatever the hell. Yeah. That was. Well, this was when I was doing morning. Drive. Oh, the more. Oh, the so the morning zoo kind of crap. Yeah, exactly. Right? Okay, all exactly. right. Exactly. So so how how um, did you just kind of because again these kids are always out there. And, and again, when they come to me for like an animation demo or whatever, I'm always advising them, look, come up with, and this is because I hear what you say and Rob says and Maurice and Bob Bergen and stuff. I always tell them, come up with six to eight characters that are yours. Right. Come up with characters that are yours. Right. You're not doing somebody else. You're not doing somebody else, but it's like, it's like, uh, because I know Maurice always says it's like, uh. I would take uh, uh, William Shatner and my sixth grade science teacher and put them together yeah. and see what they would sound like. Yeah. Is that kind of the process you yes. used when you were doing your characters? Yes. Because did, you, did you take people from your absolutely, past? Absolutely, yeah. Because uh, you got to start someplace. Yeah. And so you, you start with w- what's f- kind of familiar to you. Yeah. And you go, oh, I remember, you know, Doss Butler used to do, you know, this sort of... <laughs> droopy dog. Yeah, and then you, you figure, you know, I don't know if he did droopy, but, you know, but you say, that's kind of a fun thing. And then what if he, you know, then you... you Sort of up here in your nose, yeah. you know, kind of. So you just start mixing and matching. I think of it as like paintbrushes in a, on, you know, in a, in a, in a jar that you're just, you know, picking different brushes and different colors and mixing them together. And right. who knows, you know, you could, there's so many things that we can do with our, 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 our mouths and our faces and our yeah. throats, you know, that we can make crazy sounds and crazy noises. So know? now, so now, getting back to the tick, mm-hmm. okay, when you, so the audition process was primarily. You see the character. You have these. You read lines, a description of him, and right? then you read the lines, and and, then, and, and then, those three well, things together give so, you an so, idea. So what was? Do you remember the culmination I, of, ab- of for, how you? For him, I absolutely do, because there were three guys that that stuck out of my head that became the the amalgamation that became the tick. Okay. Who, and uh, the three guys, in addition to my my own junk going on in my brain, but but it was. Uh, you remember Fire Sign Theater? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I was Phil a, Proctor. Yeah, and all Phil those Proctor. Guys? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Phil Austin and those guys. Uh, well, I was a huge Fire Sign Theater fan in high school. Mm-hmm. And, in fact, one of the big deals back when I was a junior in high school was to memorize their entire uh, Nick Danger third eye <laughs> bit. Okay. It was like 20 minutes you know, yeah. worth of material. And be able to do all the voices. Yeah. And I could do that in high school. Mm-hmm. And so when I went to audition, mm-hmm. when, when, when I went to audition for, uh, for The Tick... And I looked at the character, and I read the description, and then read some of the sample lines. I immediately thought Nick Danger, okay. Phil Austin's voice in, in that characterization, was so vivid in my head. Uh, Ted Baxter, Ted Knight, you know, on the Ted Mary Knight, Tyler, on the Mary Tyler Moore show. And the Look goodness, up, sort of goofiness, and yeah. all mayor, you know. God. Hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> and he was so brilliant uh, in that, you know. I mean, such a believable, ridiculous character. Yeah. And then and Gary Owens. Oh. You know, watching him yeah. as an announcer on Laughing. Yeah. You know, again, just and again, you kids silly... out there, look all these people up because they're like legends. They're yeah, legends. They, and they are legends. And yeah. so for me, these were the guys I grew up listening to, being uh, you know um, uh, influenced by. And so they came together in my head. I just thought this guy, you know, he's big. He can, you know, he can, he, he can't be this young boy. Yeah. You know, and he's got, you know, a bit bumbling, and he, you know, he's got, he's very earnest. You know, you know. I know. Oh yes, yes. Yeah. Sort of that sort of. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> who's this? Who's this idiot? They call the tick. The tick. I am that. I am the, <laughs> that that idiot. jerk. It's, it's jerk. Oh, <laughs> it's jerk. A, it was jerk. I okay. am that jerk. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of my favorite lines on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's that's amazing. Yeah. I love that though. Of, so that's of, so that's of, that's where where is like taking p- different colors of clay and and mushing them together. And but again, and, different and, colors of clay of things that meant something to you and yeah, things that yeah. that that you drew from from your own life. Right. And I and think hope, that's important for young actors to know. Yeah, exactly. And 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 uh, you know, I'm not I'm t- typically not a person that's going to be dreaming up characters just out of the blue. They're right. they're all 
based on and 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 hopefully when I did like for instance did the tick, it didn't end up sounding just like Gary Owens or or just right. like you know Ted Knight or or or, or um, it, uh, it was that mix. It yeah, was that meshing danger. of. of Exactly. Of and then that's them. where your own imagination has to come into play because then yeah. you've got to take it and be able to take any words they put in front of you and make it come to life and, and, so, and so make it jump off the page. So you're saying you you need to be become that person yeah. and think like that person, y- yeah. so on and so forth. Yeah, or right? be able to, at that moment in that session, be able to be that character, did, be that Did you guy. ever, I'm curious, did you ever, were you ever in a session... <laughs> Where were the writers in the session or just the director? Oh no, they were there because generally, at least in the first session uh, or the first uh, season, rather, uh-huh. uh, Ben Edlin, the creator of the show okay. and the creator of the Tick and the comic book, um, wrote most of those episodes. Okay, and was there uh, so, in so, the studio. So did did it ever happen where he was saying, "Hey, I kind of want to do this," kind of, and you you looked at him and said, "Yeah, you know, I don't, see, you know, I think the guy would do it this way." Yes, it yes it did. Did you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you win and, or did he win? Well, I, I think was it a, a, kind of a little a little of both. I mean, there was a, a bit of a compromise there and a bit of collaboration. But I know that I was always trying to. It's interesting because in the beginning they wanted the tick to be much sort of younger and guileless. Okay. They want. Um, in fact, I remember thinking at the time. Gosh, they're, they're, it sounds like what they want them to sound like is what I sounded like on Teen Wolf. You oh, know, okay, this right, very yeah. kind of, you know, gee, boof, you know, kind of kind of young and up here yeah. and, oh, wow, a blimp kind of thing. Yeah. Because I think that they thought that that was what was going to be funny coming out of this big, you know, 400-pound, yeah, right, 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 yeah. 7-foot-tall blue superhero. And I that's what I kept kind of fighting against because I, I you know just didn't why? see Cause, it like Because you knew better. Because I knew better. Because you knew better, yeah, cool. Townsend. Gee, well, Townsend knew better. I did. I thought yeah. I did, at least. <laughs> yeah. I tried. Yeah. You know. I love that. That's, yeah, that's, a, that's a great story. You worked with Mickey Dolenz. Mickey Dolenz. He was Arthur. I actually I was... auditioned for Arthur. Did you really? Apparently, Mickey Dolenz got it. <laughs> Apparently so. You know, because Mickey, yeah. at the time, he needed the gig. Yeah. He needed it. You know, Mickey, if you're out there... I let you have it. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. I no, took, uh, yeah. was that cool working I took a with a spill just a, for you. A, I took, yeah, took a dive. Yeah. Working with a monkey? Totally, because I was a huge monkeys fan. Sure. I was just like that perfect. I mean, age, as we you all know. were. Yeah. You know? And so me, were you always me, like humming, take the last train to Clarksville? Well, well it was hard <laughs> to just not be a total fanboy. Yeah. When I, especially when I first met him. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, it was just a thrill for me, and and so that first session, they actually were re-recording Tick's lines from mm-hmm. from having cast somebody else originally, and I and then uh, I, I they had a callback, right. which I was where I finally got the the gig, but so I'm in the studio with him, um, just with Mickey, and we're recording all our scenes together. And so that was such a trip for me, yeah. You know, and, but we got to chatting a little bit afterwards. I said, you know, what are you doing now and stuff, and and. Uh, Again, this so this is the same month, by the way, that I did nine eleven. No, this, oh. uh, uh, this is the same. Thank goodness. Well, no, we but, didn't have that again. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. but it was in August of ninety three, the same month that I did the first musty TV promo for NBC. Oh my god! August so. of ninety three. Those two things I started. So it's like a dream month. It's it was, like you're, you're, I look back you're, you're at that and just thinking, yeah, <laughs> I've, I've, I've died and gone to heaven. I would have been just humming tunes all day long. <laughs> <laughs> it was great working with him. He's such a great guy, and and uh, worked with him on that first season. And and then of course he went had to go out on tour uh-huh. uh, with the Monkees and couldn't record for the second season. So that's when Rob Paulson Rob Paulson came, came in, in and yeah. took over Arthur. We were just was, Rob and I were just talking about that the other day, as yeah. he is in everything he does. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No. Oh, that is so cool. What yeah. what a ah, you yeah. got a great stories, man. Oh god, Don't they have great you. stories, kids. He's got great stories. Okay, um, so. Uh, uh, Okay, let's go to uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm-hmm. Heard okay. of it. All right. Um, uh, y- you did all the cowabunga stuff. You were Michael. You, all, you also <laughs> played, uh, Young Bo told me you also played the Rat King. I was the Rat King. And, and a lot of people don't, don't see, see that of you. Yeah, right? well, I'm not sure how big the Rat King was. was uh, Bo was Rat King, pretty big uh, character. Oh, you have to say. I liked it. <laughs> yes. no, Bo it. liked it. The valet liked it. So Bo liked it. Bo if he knows, likes it, and Bo knows. Hell yeah! Oh yeah, Bo knows. Bo knows. Uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what was, yeah, so I did Rat King. What, what was the audition process for Ninja Turtles? I mean, did you just think was, this was a ridiculous cartoon at yes, first? Because yes. when I heard 
when my kids were little then, and I heard of this teenage, I'm like, oh, I don't know. That's exactly this. what, what we thought. What the hell? What the yeah. Ninja Turtles? Yeah, that's Can't they figure something out? Is something you know, what, else out? What happened I mean, to like, we're rabbits doing, that shot doing, ducks? Yeah, we're, we're doing My Little Pony <laughs> yeah. and, and Strawberry Shortcake yeah. in those days. Exactly. So it's like Teenage yeah. Mutant Ninja Turtles. Well, I was doing Fraggle Rock at the time, and Stu Rosen was the uh, voice director on Fraggle Rock. Okay. And um, we had a great cast on Fraggle Rock, Rob Paulson being one of them. And uh, and so Stu came into one of the Fraggle Rock sessions one day and pulled out of his bag a, a comic uh-huh. of Ninja Turtles yeah. and said, you guys aren't going to believe this, but look, at this is what I'm going to be uh, directing next. And, and I'll bring you guys in on it. So, yeah. so he showed us, and of course we all did exactly that. So, yeah. what? what? you got to be kidding. There's no way. Turtles, <laughs> and they're doing <laughs> they'll, ninja they'll stuff. They'll never fly. And yeah. Yeah. Martial arts. Yeah, and then before you... Because before, if they fall on their back, they can't get up. They can't get up. I don't they're know if anybody's ever they're, they're, you know, they're, figured that out yet. They're, they're spinning. They're, yeah, they're on their yeah. back. Yeah. So, yeah, so the break dancing. <laughs> so so, so uh, Stu brought us in to audition for this thing, and, you know, typical audition process. I auditioned for all four of the Turtles, and, um, and then they cast us, but when they cast us, they hadn't decided whether Cam was going to be uh, Michelangelo or okay. Leonardo, and uh, same with me. So they were going to try us both so out. So did it on the come down to record. who won more money on Passport? <laughs> <laughs> who got the bed spread? Yeah, right. You're Michelangelo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that works yeah. really well. Um, yeah, so that you know, we just auditioned for it, got it, and you know, took it from there for wow. ten years. That is amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, and of course, thinking that this, this, we're lucky if this thing because the first thing that we did was how many, a five how many callbacks part, did you go to? Uh, a couple, yeah. I we went through, through through several. I remember, yeah. And they narrowed it down. And once they, and again, once they finally cast us, they knew that Rob Paulson was going to be um, Raphael and uh, uh, Barry uh, Gordon was going to be Donatello, but uh, hadn't decided between Cam and I for Michelangelo or Leonardo. Okay. And uh, so we the the first session that we did was a series of, of five episodes that was going to be just a five part mini series that was the pilot. Okay. And then they were going to air that pilot over five days. Uh, and see how it did, see you know, how it did and then, and then decide it, yeah. from there whether they're going to actually go to series with it. So it was at that first session that they had, it was just a crapshoot. Uh, Stu said, Tommy, why don't you do Michelangelo first on this first pass? And then uh, for the second uh, pass, we'll, we'll switch and have Cam do Michelangelo. You'll do Leonardo. I said, sure. So I did that, and then after the first pass... They were busying themselves with other stuff, and, and switching parts wasn't a priority at that point, I can mm-hmm. see. And uh, so I suggested to Sue, Stu, do you, do you want us to switch? And, and he said, no, 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 you know, just keep it the way it is. We'll, we'll just, you know, worry about that later. And they just never tried it the other way. So yeah. Cam ended up being Leonardo for 10 years and so now how, Michelangelo. Because um, uh, I know Robbie Rist was Michelangelo in, in, the in movies. these live-action movies. Right. Mm-hmm. Was there was a, it a totally different process for you? Did they did they have you come in and audition for the nope. live-action thing? The, or no, not? they didn't. And that was so weird for us because by that time, I guess we'd been on the air it was for a couple, of, couple right? of seasons. Yeah. And, then, and, and I remember reading in the trades that they were going to be doing a Ninja Turtles Live action movie, and so I thought, you're well, like, they gotta have. Wow. I, th- oh, I thought, puff, to... puff, I'm, I'm in. <laughs> exactly. I'm in the money. Yeah, I get the movie now. Yeah, so we're yeah. figuring. I mean, they've got, they've got to have, you know, guys in suits or, or it's, yeah. you know, and back then, I, I don't even think they had CGI going. Right. It wasn't, yeah. You know, it was all the Henson to... stuff. Yeah. So I thought they, they got, they're gonna have to use us for the voices. Yeah. You know, and um, and then the the closer it got, and the closer it got, and the closer it got to releasing this film. And the more we weren't hearing anything, yeah. and our agents, uh, our agents finally, you know, got in, in involved and tried to see what was going on, and they just flat out said, "No, we don't want the cartoon guys." Really? They just didn't want us. Yeah. So that was, that was a directorial choice. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and and then for all three films. Yeah. Yeah. So the, in fact, I mean, for every series that came out after that, they didn't want to have anything to do with the original car- cartoon guys. Yeah, you know, yeah, the, yeah. The cartoon voices. Well, it's funny because <clears> I, I even though the others were cartoons. Well, they're doing another film, I think. Right. They're doing another or, film. Did they do it already, or did they uh, shoot it already? C- couldn't tell you. Because I know they didn't call Robbie back in. Yeah. And you know, Robbie Riss has not changed his voice. <laughs> right. You know. Right. It, it right. doesn't matter how much he ages. You know, he is. You know the typical surfer guy. Yeah, totally. Know? 
yeah. they didn't even and call he'd be, him. And he'd be perfect for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 I called him up and I was like, hey, "Say, so are you doing the new one?" Because I don't know if you know, but Robbie Wrist and I produced "Stump the Band." Everybody, "Stump the Band." It yeah. makes a great gift and for I'll Christmas. Okay. And, I, and I got my uh, lovely, yeah, there, lovely there parting gift. Yeah, here. please, yeah. please give it to the kids. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah. So the, I don't know who's in this one, but uh, did you did you <laughs> realize it was going to be this monster hit thing? No, I had no it? idea. Yeah. I mean, we had we had no way of knowing, you know, and and this is back really, you know, certainly before the internet as we know it. Yeah, right. You yeah. know, this we started the show in eighty seven, eighty eight, and then, um, and uh, and then um, all you know, all we all we knew is we were just getting all this fan mail. Yeah. And the ratings were through the roof, you know, and it was on CBS, it was in syndication. We we're just doing season after season after season, yeah. big seasons too. You know? How do you feel? Because, I mean, I've done, I mean, I've, <laughs> compared to you, I've done nothing, really. <laughs> I haven't done anything. But, but, but I you're mean, the doctor. It, it's, I'm the doctor. You're the doctor. I mean, it's, it, it's fun to be on TV and stuff like yeah. that. I've been on TV and a couple movies and stuff. But you have played these iconic characters yeah. that are in, in the, the, uh, the, the, the fabric of America. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, how do you for, feel for about a, For a full-on generation. And what? But, but I mean, it's it's forever, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's it's not go, it's, it ain't going away. Right. It's pretty you know? bizarre. I, it's is a it weird? Pretty bizarre thing. Yeah, you have grandchildren, well, children. They sit and watch. Yeah. And especially now with Ninja Turtles, because you know, with the new series that's on now on Nick, uh, which Rob is in, yeah. crazily enough. Oh yeah, but, yeah, yeah. They, you know, they, so so he was the him. original now, Raphael, he's, but he's, but he's Donatello on, right, on the new Donatello, series. Right. Donatello. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so, so Ninja Turtles is huge again now. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I saw a Kmart spot on TV last night where they're, you know, moms picking gifts and putting them, you know, on the, the checkout line. And one of them is a big Ninja Turtles thing. She's, yeah. you know, and I'm going, this is so strange that it's come back with with such a, I mean, such do you, energy. Do you, like, you're sitting on a bus. I'm guessing you take the bus a lot. I do. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're sitting on the bus or, I mean, you're just out in public. Do you ever just, like, want to look at people and go... You know, I'm Michelangelo. <laughs> I <laughs> have you ever just thrown it in? I, I no, I, no, I don't, because that's not you me. You realize but, I'm but, a but, chick. Yeah, <laughs> but but I will say it is such a is such a trip, knowing that I've I've done that I've got a fairly large body of work in the yeah. nearly thirty years I've been doing this here in town, and 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 yet I'm, nobody recognizes me. Yeah, you know, yeah. and. And yet, when I meet people, and they nice say, and so what do you yeah. do? Yeah. And I say, well, I'm a voice actor. Oh, really? Have you done anything I've heard? Well, I did this. And then all of a sudden, you know, their jaw drops, their eyes yeah, bug yeah, out. Yeah, and they're yeah, going, yeah. that's you? And that's kind You're of fun. that guy? That's and fun. That is a riot. <laughs> I, will, I have to admit that that is yeah. a total kick in the pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that is so cool. Yeah, so, thanks. for the kids out there, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap this up here. Um, what, what uh, promo-wise... Mm -hmm. Let's talk promo just r real quick. What do you suggest they do to try to break in the promo? I mean, obviously, it came easy for you, you know, because you happen to be in the right place at the right, right place, time. Right place, right time, like right. Got if, real if, lucky. Somebody, if somebody wants to break into that promo market, which I, I agree is a very difficult market to get into. I think, into. Uh, listen, uh, Billy, I think that every niche today in the voiceover world is hard to break into. Yeah. You know, partly because of technology. Everybody's either got an ISDN box at home. Yeah. You know, it doesn't matter where you live anymore. It used to be that you had to live here in town right. in order to get yeah. the work. Or at least one of the major markets. Right. Yeah. No longer. Um, and, and every, you know, nine-year-old can have a recording studio on his, you know, desktop. And, right. And so... It's, 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 I think it's harder than ever to try Tenacity? And, break into tenacity is an absolute must yeah. you got to just stick with it you got to say you know never say die it's just right. you just keep going for it um but i think the biggest trick and the, and the one of the most important things is to get yourself in front of get your face in front of the people who are doing the work and especially the people who are doing the hiring i, I think it's you still have to have a great demo okay uh, it takes a great demo to get a great agent because mm -hmm. i think you still have to have a great agent you know, trying to do this stuff. I mean, and again, they're, they're, you had that the, demo way, way back when. Yeah. In the, in the dinosaur. Yeah. And listen, I'll tell you, back in the, the dinosaur days of yeah, quarter inch tape. But I'll tell you, when I moved out here, when I made that decision to move out here, I knew that I had a really strong 
tape because I've got a good ear. I right. know that. And I was listening to the Danny Darks and the Mark Elliotts sure. uh, on the ear because as production director at this last station that I was at in 84, you know, I was getting these tapes in, these national spots from New York and Chicago and L.A., and I was listening to these guys. Yeah. And not that I was trying to copy them because, I, I, again, I didn't want to copy them. Right. But I wanted to take what it was that I loved about their sound and incorporate and, that and into what own. I do. And make it yeah. your own. Yeah. And, and so I knew I had a really strong tape when I when I came out to L.A. Yeah. Um, a really strong demo is important. Uh, it's going to take a really strong demo, generally, to get a really good agent. A really good agent's important. Now, there are websites now, you know, the Voice123 and, you know, yeah, Voices.com voice. com and stuff yeah. like that, where where you, you can... Um, you don't have to have an agent, and you can try and right. you know sell your wares that way. Uh, I imagine there'll probably be more and more of those kinds of sites. I would think you know, so too. Well. I mean, I don't know why voiceover has become so popular. It's and it's like exploded. Yeah, but it yes. re it really has. I mean, so many people. Yeah, it's like everybody wants to do yeah. it now. You know, uh, and, but but here's the thing, and and the the thing I want to make sure kids understand out there is. It's difficult. Oh, it's yeah. difficult. It's not just yeah. oh, I'm going to read this and what the hell? Right. Maybe I'll book something. Right. And then, I mean, look at look at the experience you had before, before you got into yeah. it. You had the theater and you had your radio background and you had all these characters on the radio and so on and so forth. So, right. so again, I mean, if you're serious about this, kids, you know, work hard at it. Work hard at it. You yeah. know, and yeah. and then the cartoon world. What do you think? What what? What what's what's advice you might give them? Well, you know, I'm going to say the same thing um, that, that that those elements you have to have, but but going and um, whatever you can do to be around the people who are doing it or making it happen. Mm -hmm. um, if there are ways to meet the agents, if there are ways to meet casting directors, okay. you know, if there are, I mean, there and there are workshops for all this stuff. Right. You know, there are promo workshops. There's regular commercial workshops. There's animation workshops. I mean, I mean, that's why we put together the margarita nights. I mean, yeah. I make it sound like just a big drunken debauchery, you know, and, right. and, right. and it is. And it Don't is. get me wrong. <laughs> and we're hoping to put in a pool next year. <laughs> so, uh, but... But it really is my way of having someone like you come in, or Bob Bergen. I've had right. agents come in. Sandy yep. Schnarr has yep. come in. Yep. Uh, Jeff Jones has come in. People yep. like that, so that people can meet those people. So, and it's, I it's, think it's that, very nice to hear you say, <coughs> "Get in front of people." I think that that's uh, it, that's so important. I think it's. It, it, I, I mean, I can't overemphasize how important I think that is because. Otherwise, you're you're just another voice out there who nobody knows, and they're getting these demos, you know, sent to them on MP3s and their email, yeah. and it's like, who knows? Uh, you got to have something that's going to get you in front of the people who are making the decisions to bring you in. You know, if if Andrea Romano is uh, running a, a cat, you know, an animation workshop, or Sue Blue, or who you know, whoever is doing right. that now, Charlie Adler. Um, these are the guys, if, if you're interested in animation, that you want to go study from mm -hmm. uh, because because they'll tear, tear you apart and then build you back up again. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. Uh, but that's uh, what, we we that's just what... had Charlie Adler come in and do a margarita. Okay, night. well, you know how Charlie is. Charlie, 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 Char Charlie's he's, not going to treat you with kid gloves. He is a crazy mofo. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But you know what I learned about Charlie? Because I directed, like you, I directed you over the years. I directed right. Charlie over the years right. and whatnot. And I just saw him as this crazy, crazy man. Right. But when I watched him with students and listened to what he was saying to students, as yeah. I'm listening to you here today, I find that there is that, that uh, he's the sweetest man in There's the world. There's a compassion there. He's so, the, and he's uh, so an dedicated to, to the craft and yep. the art yep. as, as I see, because you and I have had you know, talks over the years and stuff. And, and, and again, that's one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show Thanks. because I want people to know that you can be these human beings yeah. who are, who like to fuck around and have a good time <laughs> and be this iconic type of a thing without letting it go crazy. Right. You know what I mean? And, and without you, letting you, it you, own you, you, you yeah. have always been one of those people who Thank I've you. seen over the years and it, it's, it's just a, a pleasure sitting here talking to Thanks, you. Thanks man. Yeah. I no, this, this has been fucking crazy. <laughs> and, and I appreciate you putting up with my little show here. 
<laughs> I love it. Right? Are you kidding? I'm a little pissed that you ate the last cookie. But... Uh, well, you know, it, it, it was made for me. <laughs> <laughs> my name on it. And I'm going to take the goddamn thing. <laughs> Townsend Coleman, ladies and gentlemen. Townsend Coleman. Jim, play us out. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Hey, for God's sakes, Fortaleza. Fortaleza, <laughs> the best goddamn tequila I've ever had. Uh... Townsend Coleman. some more of him the voiceover doctor a real smooth talker the voiceover doctor show